If you pick one of these five niches and run with it, you will have a profitable freelancing business this year, even if you are a beginner. Now, the first niche is short form video editing and repurposing. And I don't mean editing 15 to 20 minute long YouTube videos or doing really fancy cinematic color graded editing, nothing like that. I mean, taking a long video and editing the most important information into short form content for platforms like Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, and TikTok. So as an example, I'm gonna spend hundreds hundreds of dollars and at least 20 hours on this long form video that you're watching right now. So if you can take this very video and clip it into five short form videos that I can also post onto YouTube Shorts, Reels, and TikTok, I'm a happy duck, right? So why now? YouTube Shorts just got monetized, which means YouTubers can earn money off of Shorts and supply is greater than demand for YouTube Shorts, which basically means YouTube needs more Shorts content from creators. Yes, these are great things to mention when you pitch someone with this service. TikTok also has a billion monthly active users. Instagram has like two 2.5 billion monthly active users and reels get 22% more interaction than normal videos posted. So long story short, short form video is popping, locking. So help a client ride that short form wave and take a short every time I say short. <laughs> now, how would I learn this if I've never done this before? The first thing I would do is I would do my research. You can easily pick up on basic video editing skills just by studying trends, format styles of popular videos on shorts. TikTok and Reels. So example, go look at Alex Ramosi's Instagram. He's doing a lot of short form content. And by the way, he mentioned somewhere that he pays $20,000 a month to repurpose videos for Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reels, and all that stuff. So look at the fonts that they're using, the type of editing, what do they put on the screen, and then what kind of hooks they use for the videos and how they cut that content together. And I would take some notes on all of that. Be a little good, good little nerd and take some notes on that. Then I go spend two to three hours learning a video editing tool, even something really, really simple as fine like half cut, splice, kapoing, open shot, or yeah, you can also try something heavier duty like Final Cut Pro, but again, you're not really doing anything complicated. You're just editing clips together, adding text and or graphics, right? Okay, cool. So now how do we sell this, right? I'm gonna grossly simplify these steps for the sake of time. So the first thing I would do is find monetized creators, people who have minimum 10,000 subscribers on YouTube to maximum 100,000 subscribers. Nobody's super big because they probably already have an editor and nobody just getting started because they're probably not making enough money to pay you, right? So really go for that sweet spot. The second thing I would do is download one of their most popular and recent videos because the chances are they want that video, the really the one that's doing really well to have more longevity. And then I would use an app of my choice to edit one short form video. So super important here is to make sure your edits look good. This is one of the biggest pitfalls I've seen. Make sure you make clean cuts, use clean fonts, make sure it's easy to read, make sure there are good transitions, nothing touching the edges, be mindful of their branding, the colors that they use, make sure you've also really pulled out an impactful snippet of what they're saying in that long form video. Kind of the key sentences, those are the ones you wanna pull out. Next thing I would do is write a really good cold pitch and I've got tons of videos on how to do that. And then I would attach the short form video that I made into the email directly so they can see it in the email to give them proof of, hey, this is exactly what I can do for you because I've already done it for you, right? And give them a super good starter deal for like five videos to start with, right? Make it super easy for them to say yes to kind of give you a trial go, especially if you're a beginner, we wanna make it as less risk as possible for them to give you a chance. And now obviously it won't be as easy as pitching one person and landing that one client, right? None of us have a 100% conversion rate. So you'll probably have to give it a lot of goes, but the good news is for every video you edit, you're practicing to get better. So you're winning either way. All right now the next niche is to be a virtual assistant for youtubers take the 923 tasks on their to-do list away save them some time so why now apparently youtube paid out more than 30 billion dollars to creators in the past three years and that is not even including how much creators make from brand sponsorships so external companies so you know, they're making money, they're busy, they probably want to spend more time making videos. So take the task they don't want to do off their plate. So here's how I'd learn it. The first thing I would do is find creators that I love and or ideal clients of some kind on YouTube. And I would get really familiar with what they do and how they do it. Like what kind of content do they create? What's their vibe or style, that kind of stuff. The next thing I would do is I would figure out what their to-do list looks like and think about really what they do on a weekly basis. If you can't think of anything, go watch a few, a day in the life of a YouTuber video and you'll see exactly what types of tasks they do. You know, it might be things like uploading videos, writing descriptions, doing research for scripts, keeping track of analytics,
mistakes creating thumbnails. They probably also get a lot of emails and need help handling requests for our sponsorships, handling their calendar. So there's so many things that they're doing on a weekly basis. For many monetized creators, YouTube is their full-time job. So they have tons of things on their list that they can hand off to you. Next thing I would do is do some studying on the types of tasks that are on the list that I would personally like to help this person with. And coincidentally, you can do that on YouTube. So you can go on YouTube and really type in anything. You can understand YouTube as a platform, understand the features, the process of running a YouTube channel, of uploading videos. You can really learn all of that straight on YouTube. Then I would make a portfolio that showcases exactly what I want to do and who I want to help. And I have a video with a free portfolio template that I'll link below as well. Now, how would I sell it? First thing I would do is I would make that list of YouTubers that are the right size to be pitching. You really need to make sure you find that sweet spot client. Someone again, who is not too big, who already has a full team and also someone not too small that doesn't have enough money to pay you, right? Someone ideally with tens of thousands of subscribers, you know, they're starting to make good money. Their list is piling up and they're starting to think this is way too much for me to do. I need help, right? You can be that person. The next thing I would do is I would write again, a really good cold pitch that's perfectly suited to a YouTuber and addresses their pain points and the tasks that they hate doing. I would never be like, hey, I'm a virtual assistant and I can help you with lots of tasks on your list. I would get really specific. I'm a virtual assistant specifically for beauty YouTubers and I love helping my clients with anything from uploading videos to responding to comments to managing their calendars or their inbox and sponsorship requests sponsorship requests. Make it clear how you would love to make their lives easier. And I would make it super personalized to show that I did my research on them and I'm familiar with them and I have watched their videos. That will go about a thousand miles over the normal generic cold pitches that they're getting. Then I would send out like 30 to 50 cold pitches over a few weeks and see what I get back. And of course you can use kind of like a cold pitch structure template and just fill in personalized things for each cold pitch to kind of systematize the process a little bit for yourself so you're not starting from scratch every time. The next niche is to be an expert at remote project management for small business. That's basically what I offered as a freelance digital business manager. So this is a tried and tested niche by me. I helped clients set up their project management tools like ClickUp and Asana and then manage their projects and teams. So an average of 4.4 million businesses are started every year just in the US. So that is a lot of businesses and every business under the sun that wants to get things done needs project planning and management. Otherwise things do not get done. Now the PPS here is this one is great if you're a fellow lover of organization, making lists, planning, productivity, getting things done, this could be your jam because this was my jam. <laughs> now, a quick note here is that project management is kind of a huge and broad topic. So my recommendation to you would be to pick a specific tool, become an expert at that tool and start there before going broader because it's much easier to communicate how you help specifically than to say, I do these like 50 things under this topic umbrella of project management. So how I would learn it, the first thing I would do is I would pick a tool, a project management tool. So I would recommend to you ClickUp or Asana. Those are two of my favorites and I have basically used all of them. So I would pick those two. I think they have a lot of longevity. I think they're really gonna withstand the test of time. Then I would try to learn everything I can about this tool. So for example, for ClickUp, I would go to ClickUp University, which is completely for free. And I would watch all the videos and all the training. And that's how I would learn how to use all of the features. I would create then a free account to get better at it. You know, begin testing out the features, seeing how they work, create a few sample projects, organize boards, assign tasks, deadlines, update task statuses, that kind of stuff. I might also check out their competitors like Trello, Asana Mondays, Rike, that kind of stuff to understand why ClickUp is the best so I can market better to clients to be like, this is why ClickUp is better and this is why you should start with ClickUp or switch to ClickUp. Now, here's how I would start this. I would try a few different things. Number one, cold pitching, a very low cost or even free set up to start like with one or two clients uh, to make it really easy for them to say yes, right? And to get those testimonials that I can then use to sign clients in the future. Then I would increase my price point with every additional client just slowly um, to validate the price point every step of the way. Then I would join strategic communities and really build myself up to be an expert. So I would make sure to join ones full of business owners and establish myself as the ClickUp person by offering tons of free value about ClickUp and making sure my profile, if they click to see like, who is this person who's always talking about ClickUp, that it is really strategic to leading to my free discovery calls about like, 
see how ClickUp is going to save you 10 hours a week, you know, or see how ClickUp is going to help you get your projects done faster so you make more money as a business owner. And now that I think about it, I think I would also offer an audit package for people who already are using ClickUp but maybe are feeling like they're not using it to the best of their capabilities, right? Then I would go into communities where people are using ClickUp already and again, establish myself there as an expert by answering their questions, providing value. You know, if people feel like they're not using it properly, they may check out my profile to be like, who is this person? And then see that I have an audit offer essentially. Other than that, I would probably, again, surprise, surprise, do cold pitching. So you want to get that sweet spot of a client who is, you know, just hiring their first few people and now really needs to be using a project management tool. It's not really a solopreneur because a solopreneur can still kind of get away with using like their own list system. It's not really about managing many people. So it's really that business that's starting to take off. It's starting to hit like multiple five figures, potentially even going into six figures that would need to start thinking about a project management tool. And I would do a little bit of stalking on YouTube or Instagram to find those people, use a lot of keywords and pitch something that's easy for them to say yes to at the start. A free consultation call, a super cheap audit or setup, and then go from there. Now here's the next niche. Offer to help businesses create paid courses or paid workshops. The e-learning market is currently worth over like $300 billion and it's only gonna get bigger. And best believe that business owners wanna get in on that e-learning bread. So help them do that. Help businesses package up their expertise their skills into a digital product because the profit margins are so good. And I have created a course myself and the biggest blocker aside from, of course, me, myself and I was creating course slides. It was exhausting. And if I hadn't hired someone to help me with my thousands of course slides, my course wouldn't be done and wouldn't have made me any money in the past few years, right? So creating course slides, in my opinion, is a huge pain point for someone who wants to have a course ready and is a relatively beginner friendly, easy thing to offer as a freelancer. Now we're not trying to be graphic designers that takes a long time to learn. We're just trying to help create a few slide templates, create slides out of information given by the business owner. So as an example, how I did it with the person I hired, her name was Rosa, she was awesome, um, was that I sent her voice messages about what I wanted included in different lessons. And then she created slides based on my voice messages. And she had no experience in doing this before I hired her. And that was fine with me because I wasn't hiring her for some super strategic course strategy knowledge, right? I just need Needed someone to help me with the first draft of course slides. So you could be someone's Rosa. So how I would learn this, I would, for example, sign up for Canva's design school, which is yep free. And I would watch all the relevant trainings on how to use Canva, how to create slides, look through their slide templates, how to change them and adapt them with brand colors and fonts. And then I would also do research on online courses. I would spend a little time doing research into how they're made, how they're sold. And I have a video actually on my YouTube channel where I break down step-by-step step how I made and sold my course that may give you good context into a course workflow as well. So you can check that out if you want, but there are lots of resources on YouTube about creating online courses. Just familiarize yourself a little bit so you understand what clients are talking about and you know what type of workflow would work for a client. All right, how would I sell this? I would identify a few ideal clients for this offer. Specifically, I would look for educational YouTubers who share their knowledge on specific skills, who have minimum tens of thousands of subscribers, but do not have any paid digital products. Okay, there is huge missing profit potential for them. I would look for artists, fashion YouTubers, people who specialize in tools of some kind like Notion, Zapier, ClickUp, people who teach video editing, people who teach baking. These, all these skills are awesome and can easily be packaged up into a course. Then I would make a portfolio either with Notion or Canva where I write a little bit about myself and show off some slides I've made for an imaginary course. Next thing I would do, I would begin engaging with them regularly on Instagram, Twitter, whatever platform these people are on and make sure to offer only value and be as genuine as possible. After a while, I would ask if they've ever considered creating a course because that could be a great additional revenue stream for them because their skills are incredible. And I would mention that I would love to chat if they're curious about how it would work and I would give them a free call. I'd get them on that short call. I give them tons of value, give them tons of clarity on how I can help them get this course 
done. And the PPPS I think we're on now is there's a huge bonus to this. Once you learn how to use Canva, you can expand your service offering to anything related to Canva, right? You can help them design freebies in Canva. You can help them create promotional social media graphics. You can help them create workbooks for the course in Canva, whatever you want. Like Canva is dominating and I think it's a great tool specialization. I even saw someone recently who has a paid service where she tidies up people's Canva accounts and people pay her money for that. It's super cool. Okay, next niche, let's talk about Zapier. I think there's a lot of potential to niche with Zapier, honestly. I recently saw in a newsletter that someone was running a six-figure business just helping businesses set up SAFs. That was their specialization. And me personally, I also got paid to set up a lot of Zaps as a business manager too. Zapier is kind of a no brainer for a lot of small businesses because they don't have the money to custom build software to do what they need. So Zapier makes it easier and more affordable to still get some automation in to save time and money. And I know that sounded so sponsored, but it wasn't. <laughs> so why now? The global low code slash no code market is expected to grow about from 14 billion to 95 billion by 2028, so it's gonna pop off. It's gonna pop off, people love no code. You can get in on it early. So how I'd learn it. You guessed it, Xavier also has a free learning center. I'd learn about what you can automate, who can benefit from workflow automation. And once you get the basics down, you can also become a certified Zapier expert, which is a pretty snazzy authority building thing you could do. Then I would make a free Zapier account and practice setting up a few zaps to get comfy with how it works. And it's really not that complicated. And here's how I would sell it. First, I would pick a very specific group of clients so that when I pitch them, I can be really specific about the example zaps I give them. So I would never be like, hi, business owner, I can set up zaps for your business. That's too generic, right? People then have to do the thinking of what kind of zaps could this person set up for me? We want to be super specific and give them examples so they don't have to do the thinking. We're doing the thinking for them. And once you narrow that down, think about what systems and tools they're probably using now that could benefit from zaps. So for example, I'm a course creator and I have zaps that zap from my course platform into my CRM. I have zaps that zap from my payment processor into to Slack. If you want to target YouTubers, Zapier integrates with YouTube. So you can go look at their integration page to see what's possible. And these can be the exact zaps that you then pitch to clients. So just do some Googling on the tools that your person is using and what kind of zaps are possible. And then you can pitch those exact zaps. Then I would join strategic communities that my target client is in, Facebook groups, Discords, Telegrams, Slack communities, whatever. And I would establish myself as the Zapier person in that group. And I would offer tons of free value and make sure my profile is like the Zapier person and is set up to convert people to a free call to talk about what Zapier can do for them right? And then of course I would also cold pitch. I would get really specific about the zaps that I can set up for this person and their business in the pitch, how it saves them time, money. I would also start with a really low risk offer for them to say yes to, where maybe I set up five zaps for $50 or something. Then I can grab that testimonial and begin increasing my pricing from there slowly. Now that you have a profitable niche, you'll want to watch this video on how I would freelance if I had to start from scratch next. I cover everything from how to to start when you have no experience, tips to landing clients, keys to making good money as a freelancer. That video is right here. It's a good one, I promise. I spent a lot of time on it. <laughs> and as always, thanks so much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.